Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Cartel Hour, where we do live tastings and discussions of all kinds of spirits with the people who make them, use them, and enjoy them. My name is Cameron Stevens. And my name is Seth Benheim. Together, we're covering everything from familiar bottles to rare and exclusive releases from near and far away. If it's distilled, it's on the podcast. Featured in Rolling Stone, GQ, Men's Journal, and more, we bring celebrity guests, master distillers, and industry veterans to chat about the latest in the spirits world. Philip Lux carries the weight of generations on his shoulders, but he's handling the pressure just fine as Lux Row revamps old brands and carries new ones into this new generation while honoring their roots. This is family distilling in a world where many brands have gone under conglomerate parent companies. We chat with Philip about their new tasting room, making whiskey in bathtubs, and old stories with a very certain Van Winkle, all while tasting Ezra Brooks, two David Nicholsons, Rebel Yell, and a few bonus bottles that you would truly have to hunt to find anymore. Also, don't miss the surprise guest who jumps on the show to talk about the future of bourbon and what it was like to be in the business when no one was buying versus now when they can't make enough. We're here to learn a little bit and drink a little bit. So grab a glass and let's enjoy. We have a fantastic show today because we have Philip Lux, who's calling in, joining us on video. How's it going? Going great. Just very excited to be here and uh, give some history and a little stories about Lux Lux Co. and Lux Row and, uh, you know, drink some delicious bourbon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we've got a we got a hell of a lineup in front of us. But you have uh, you uh, sadly, you don't have the same lineup as us. But I, I hear you're drinking something a little special yourself. Yeah, yeah, we can dive right into it. Um, you know, this is our Lux Row commemorative bourbon that we came out with this past year. Oh, uh, look at that thing. I know. It's, uh, it's, it's our Lux, bottle, huh? Gorgeous Lux, bottle. Full cu- fully custom bottle, custom label. It's actually a uh, metal label. This this top is about a pound, maybe two. Um, but uh, it's 118.4 proof. It's a oh. 12-year-old double barrels. And it's uh, we made it to commemorate our grand opening of the distillery. So we opened in uh, April of 2018. So that's where you get the 18.4. Um, so that's uh, that's our commemorative, our Lux Row bourbon that uh, is only sold at the distillery. That's uh, awesome. If you do come down to the distillery at any point, I definitely recommend picking one up. Do you, do you still have some there? Is it in stock? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we've got plenty there. We've got a lot in stock. How, how big was the batch size or how many barrels? Um, well, so it's, it's a double barrel 12 years. So we didn't actually use, we use, in, in each batch is two 12-year-old barrels. Um, I believe we did, oh man, I'd, I'd have to look it up for you, the, the, full, the full amount, but I think it was like maybe 1,500 cases. I think because I think of COVID, we can probably still grab one for sure uh, because yeah. distillery probably shut down its tasting room. So it gave all of us a fighting chance to get back there. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Which I've been, sure, I've, yeah. been, I've been to Lux Row, actually. Oh, you have? I have. It's a Wait, beautiful when did you go? campus. I went in 2018. Okay. Um, my 30th, Wait, so like right when they opened? 30th birthday. Yeah, I was probably, I went there in September of 2018. I don't know okay. what month you guys opened, but. Yeah, we opened uh, our doors in April 2018, so you probably right. came our first big uh, kind of Kentucky Bourbon Fest um, month. That's where I picked up my Blood Oath Pact 1. Uh, they had some on the shelf when I was there, and I know that yep. that's a very rare bottle now when it comes to it is. Lux Co products and Lux yeah. Row products. Very much so. So, well, I do want to start diving into this, but, you know, right before we go ahead and do this, you know, Philip, one of the things that in, in our talks up to this point, you've consistently mentioned, and, and I really love this so much, is family. So can you tell me what family means to this whiskey? Yeah, I mean, it's not just to the whiskey, it's to the whole company. Um, we'll kind of dive into each whiskey uh, on its own, and the, there's a family aspect to each one. Um, but at Lux Row, our motto, or what, what is honestly on the, on the wall is the first thing that you see when you walk through the front door is real roots, real family, and real products. And that truly is what goes into every bottle. 
you know, family is a huge aspect of ours, um, starting back in 1958 with my grandfather and his father-in-law who started the business. Um, started right here in St. Louis, Missouri, but uh, my great-grandfather, my, my, my grandfather's uh, father-in-law, David Sherman, actually started um, a distribution company called Paramount Liquors, um, and that was in Kansas City. And my grandfather uh, was a MIT engineer, and when he graduated, my great-grandfather, his father-in-law, David Sherman, asked him to come on to the business and he came on as a salesperson and going door to door for about two or three months. And he went back to his father-in-law, David Sherman, and, you know, said, I didn't go to MIT for four years to go door to door selling booze. So he, <laughs> I was uh, going to ask you about that. Did yeah. people actually sell booze door to door? Was that a oh, thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. man. And so he came back on, uh, well, he came back to his father-in-law and um, they got together and my grandfather actually helped uh, build a bottling line to uh, help with the, the distribution company. And that's kind of where the whole business started. Um, and it's grown from there ever since. So um, 1958, St. Louis, Missouri, right down off Kemper, uh, Kemper Avenue in, here in St. Louis. You guys probably have no idea where that is. Um, but, uh, I don't, but I'm sure the locals yeah. do. They're like, oh, yeah. I know, I know, I know where that is. Yep. <laughs> Kemper Ave and Kings Highway, so. Uh, that's where it all started. Where our bottling line and our production facility is still there to this day, um, with our offices being just down the road in downtown St. Louis. So, so one of my questions is about production, right? You've got Lux Row Distillery in Kentucky, in the heart of Bardstown. Um, you know, big facility, beautiful, brand new. But the St. Louis side of this. So, how much of the stuff on the table here and the stuff you find out in the markets that comes from either Lux Co or Lux Row and carries the names, how much comes from St. Louis? How much comes from Bardstown? Well, it's all distilled in Bardstown, whether it be um, the distilleries that we were contracted with um, or Lux Row. I mean, as of right now, there's no, no juice in the bottle that's been distilled at Lux Row. It's all still contracted juice. Gotcha. We're extremely transparent about that. If you don't own a distillery, but you own brands for over 20 years, you need somebody to make that juice for you. So yeah. <laughs> it all comes from Kentucky and in Bardstown, um, but 100% of it is bottled uh, in St. Louis. So whatever is distilled in Kentucky and in Bardstown is uh, put in a tanker truck, brought back here to St. Louis, and then bottled here. So we've got uh, five bottling lines here, a 50 ml bottling line, a single barrel bottling line. Uh, so it's all done here, um, bottled, packaged, labeled, uh, and then shipped out of here across the country and across the world. So you got Lux Row. So you, it's all distilled currently um, in Bardstown, the stuff on the table from other contract distillers and barreled and bottled or just bottled in yep. barreled as well. You, buy, you get it raw distillate and you do the barreling. So, well, so I'm sorry. So all, so none of our juice is contracted anymore. Our contract is up as of last or as of this year, actually. So got it. We still have some barrels aging in Kentucky uh, from those contract distillers, but uh, everything now is at Lux Row. So it's all uh, barreled at Lux Row, actually. So our Rick houses are in Kentucky at Lux Row. The only thing that's done in St. Louis um, is bringing in the finished product um, finished got it or four year seven year ten year we actually dump it in Kentucky at the distillery um, or at the contracted locations and uh, we dump it there put it in a truck and, and transfer it back to St. got Louis. it so there aren't got any it. barrels that you'll find mm -hmm. in St. Louis no yeah nope. I was gonna ask that too if there was That's, any finishing or barreling done, done up in St. Louis I or... like I like to know that transparency as a consumer I always want to know like okay I, I, I like knowing that it's not here there, but now I'm kind of curious, like, okay, you got these facilities, you know, which facility do I want to, you know, I, I hear St. Louis, like, oh, I'm going to go to St. Louis and go see the distillery. It's like, no, 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 probably better to go to Lux Row and go have the experience there. Don't plan a trip around going to this distillery that's not actually, you know, very yeah, we, visitable. Exactly. Yeah, we don't do any tours, tours or anything in St. Louis. Yeah. Uh, strictly just production. That's behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. That's behind the scenes for sure. You know, last question really before we start drinking stuff for me is uh, when are we going to see some of the stuff that's been distilled, aged, 
and will eventually be bottled by you. And yeah, which, your stuff from start which, to finish. Which brand yeah. is it going into? Tell us about that. So it's both our Ezra Brooks, our Rebel Yell, our David Nicholson. It'll be Davis County too. Um, you know, we filled our first barrel January 10th of 2018. So we're going to dump our first barrel January 10th of 2022. So it's rapidly coming up here. Um, anything that we put in a bottle is going to be four years. Uh, so, you know, whether that be Rebel Yell, Ezra Brooks, uh, David Nicholson, all of those are four-year-old bourbons other than David Nicholson Reserve. That's a seven-year-old. But uh, it, those will be the, the brands that will get that juice right off the start. It's awesome. So yeah. a lot of the stuff we have on the table. Yeah, and these yeah. are and these are these are currently though not the still. But these are the previous. This has got to be the previous. Yeah, they're still four year. Yeah. Yep. Right. Right. Well, Unless it's the Ezra B or the old Ezra Seven. There. Yeah. Twelve years. Twelve years. Uh, uh, that's that special <laughs> that's stuff. Special. Let's let's jump right in. For sure. Now, full disclosure: we drank the Ezra Brooks on another podcast on another episode called Table Bourbons, okay. and we had Dan Dunn and Tom Caltabiano on on the show, and. Uh, we, I remember, I, you know, I listened to what I had said before. So again, one thing I like to make known to people listening is that whiskey is whiskey tasting, really concentrated whiskey tasting is so much more than just what's in the glass. And it, you know, your first time trying it, you can try something and not like it the first time and try it again and yeah. again and again. And or vice versa. We've definitely had instances of stuff that you thought you liked and it was like, yeah, it wasn't that great or when the you other revisit, way. revisit. Yeah. You know, so basically we get round two on this. Yeah. One. So if you're stuck, <laughs> out, if you got allergies, your nose isn't working, you can't smell that day, you know, all of those things play into it. So I love to remind people that when, when doing a, a proper whiskey tasting, it's okay to like something once and not like it the other time or not like something and find later on Hey, you know, that really wasn't that bad. I was a little harsh the first time. Yeah. Will that be the case today? I don't know. I got to smell. Yeah. This thing, well, but. while we dive into this and give it the first taste, why don't you tell us a little bit about this Ezra Brooks? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Ezra Brooks, we, uh, my dad, um, Don Lux, who's the chairman and CEO of Luxco now, um, actually acquired Ezra Brooks from Glenmore Distillers back in 1993. So that was the first bourbon that we, we actually owned. Um, and uh yeah it's our just our flagship uh rye bourbon so it's 78 percent corn 10 percent rye 12 percent malted barley and uh what's really unique about our rye bourbons is that they are very low in rye content so they are only 10 percent rye so you get a little bit more of that sweeter notes up front with just a little bit of the pepper spice on the back end whereas some bourbons are very high in rye um and they, they're really spicy and uh, mess with your sinuses uh, this one here, Ezra Brooks, great in the bars, great um, kind of as a well, but great all around just sipper too. You know, 90 proof uh, is the flagship there. Uh, low, Like I said, low in rye content um, with our rye mash bill. And uh, it's it's got some great flavor to it. How many different Ezra Brooks are there currently? So we've got in, our in Ezra, that bottle. Uh, so we've got our Ezra Brooks uh, 90 proof and we've got our Ezra Brooks rye. Um, and then we have our Ezra Brooks bourbon cream, which is 25 proof, uh, delicious on the rocks. You can make a root beer float with it. Uh, bourbon cream. Drink it straight out of the fridge for breakfast. It, <laughs> have you had a bourbon cream? I it is don't believe I have. absolutely delicious. Bur bourbon cream is fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, it really is. It's, uh, you know, we really lucked out, uh, last year when the Buffalo trace bourbon cream, um, super allocated and kind of uh they stopped making it for a second people couldn't find it and i had that one yeah so good. we did our Ezra brooks bourbon cream um and uh you know it it's been a great success for us uh it's delicious inexpensive and um you know great with everything honestly uh one of our mixologists one of the guys that makes some cocktails for us does a a shot with uh Rebel Yell root beer with the Ezra Brooks bourbon cream in it. Uh, Ooh, okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of different different ideas. And See, I put it in coffee. We ran out of creamer at the anything. office. And yeah. I was like, my employees are saying, that'll, like, that'll work can you go sure. get cream? I'm like, what are you guys complaining about? We got bourbon cream in the fridge. Now, granted, this was a Buffalo mm -hmm. Trace. I, I haven't had the Ezra Brooks cream. But, you know, next time I go out, I'm, I'm happy to try the, the different kind. 
oh my God. And if it's anything similar to what I've had, and it I is. think at one point in time, <laughs> uh, we even had, the cream is doing the heavy lifting. It's not, a, you know, it's like a very creamy, dense, thick thing, but it's, it's awesome. It's really great in coffee. Yeah, no, I would agree. It's, it's delicious in coffee. Um, Seth, thoughts on this one? Still hot. Uh, still a little hot for me. Um, I think it's a little thin. Uh, I, I get good notes. I get good baking spices. I get that rye spice at the end. Uh, I would have blind thought that this had more rye. I would have guessed 15 to 25%. I would have too, yeah. Given the spiciness and yeah. sort of the heat. Um, I'm, I'm, and I hate to say it, but I am still at a B minus on this. It's not my absolute favorite. But, uh, you know, you can see all these are open. I've had all these products. I just know that for this to make sense in the scheme of what else is on the table, this is a B minus for me. It's a, like you said, uh, Philip, it's a great well. This is an awesome, it's a, the price on this is under 20 bucks, I believe. In all most day, instances. Yeah. It's usually all under 17. Long. So if it's this or Jack Daniels, I'm going this. If yeah. It's, Cause Jack Daniels is a C, C minus for me in terms of bargain whiskey. So I'm yeah. at B minus. I actually really like it. Um, I'm at, about a, a pretty solid B actually what uh it, I actually think it's less hot than I had previously remember um I actually think it handles this heat quite well uh I think for me uh it's the smoky forward I, I get a I, I get a really prominent like smoky charcoal note happening okay. obviously kind of like this you know charred barrel um that really comes through nicely I didn't think it was overly hot I did also I guess a little bit more rye than you ultimately said because it is definitely peppery on the back end. Yeah, the rye is doing the, a lot of work. But the body, the body isn't. It doesn't have the oomph to get you, um, you know, in the in the realm of of some of the bigger uh, whiskeys. That being said, it's it's totally fine to sip, and I I bet you it would make a fantastic cocktail. So now we're on the uh, David Nicholson eighteen forty three, and so prior to getting uh, samples of these, I had never had the David Nicholson, and so. This is a new brand for me. I know you guys have a rye in this lineup. Is there anything else in the Nicholson that's not on the table between these two and the rye? No, sir. No, nope. that's Just it. That. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, and what's the story? Two. Who is David Nicholson? Yeah. So this is honestly my favorite story to tell about a brand and a family. And this is where it really uh, comes full circle as a family owned and operated company dating back to the, you know, late 1950s. Um, but, uh, just to give a, a little bit more background of, um, kind of my, my family and my dad. Um, so my dad joined, uh, joined the company as kind of my grandfather's and his father's right-hand man and took over the company in, uh, in 2004, well, renamed the company Luxco, um, in honor of my grandfather after he passed away in 2004. And, uh, that was right after we actually bought this David Nicholson brand. And uh, we are, my family is born and raised in St. Louis. We all live in St. Louis now. That's our hometown. That's where everything is produced like we've talked about. And David Nicholson was actually a grocery store owner in St. Louis, Missouri back in 1843. And uh, he owned a grocery store right down off 6th Street downtown and produced that weeded bourbon right there in his basement um, for about 50 years. And, uh, you know, that, that's wow. got a ton of roots in it. And 50 years later, in 1893, some guy named Pappy Van Winkle, don't know if you've heard of him, might know something <laughs> about weeded bourbon, not really sure, but he purchased that product from David Nicholson and kept that mash bill going. Wow. And, and then in 2000, when we purchased this product, my dad actually got on the phone with Julian Pappy Van Winkle and purchased that product from him bringing it back to St. Louis, which means from 1843 to 2000, now to 2020, that product has gone full circle from St. Louis to the Van Winkle family, back to our family in St. Louis. And that right there is the real roots, real family, real product. Well, I, you know, I, I love the story. Um, what is the mash bill? You said weeded. So, um, yep, yep. So this is our weeded mash bill. So this is 68 corn, 20% wheat, 12% malted barley. So Okay. We have like that. Two, two mash bills, our rye and our weeded mash bill. Um, this one here, 100 proof, four-year-old um, at 
uh, 68 corn, like I said, 20% wheat, 12% malted barley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Much, much sweeter. I mean, the, definitely the wheat comes through. The wheat also really helps the body. So definitely a, a lot more of an oily body. It is. Ezra Brooks. Um, yeah, Seth, what are your thoughts? So on the nose, I was getting a little bit of an astringency, almost like that menthol, like mintiness or, or more of an herbaceous nose. Yeah, the, the Ezra Brooks had a really uh, um, like a wood and smoky forward nose for me. This one isn't a big nose, but it, it comes through uh, much bigger on the body. I mean, the difference in the roundedness of the body on the David Nicholson is it's, yeah, it's not even a We don't do that. We yeah, don't, we don't definitely provide a little more uh, density and smoothness smoothness whereas rye is going to provide that spiciness and, and less sweetness so that's how i i kind of explain it to people a lot of times and to put it you know make it as simple as possible rye bread is a little spicy wheat bread is a little sweeter so that's the kind of kind of those notes that you get um to to dumb it down a little bit i know you guys know that and you've drinking a ton of bourbon but um, it's definitely a little sweeter. Like you said, with that hundred proof, it comes off on the nose a little bit hotter, um, kind of a little bit fumey, like you said, but the drinkability and, and the price, uh, you really can't beat it. I call it my grandmother's grandmother's bourbon because back in 1843 and still coming up into the early 1900s and middle, middle of the, um, century that, you know, this is what people in St. Louis had on their shelves. This is what, People went to the store for, for a dark spirit and a bourbon. This is, you know, David Nicholson, 1843 is what they had on their show or on their, on their back bar there. Yeah. Where are you at? Uh, I like it. I do. I'm a little torn though. Uh, on one hand, I actually really love the body. I really like the sweetness. I get, I get a lot of honey, a little bit of kind of zesty lemon and orange. Um, I don't actually, in my personal opinion, I don't think it handles its heat as well as Ezra Brooks does. Really? And so for me, this one came off a little hotter. And as, especially towards the, kind of like right in the middle, because the, the back finish is really nice and smooth and sweet, but kind of right in the middle, the heat's a little distracting for me. Um, and it didn't have the nose of Ezra Brooks as much uh, that I enjoyed. So for me, it's a B minus, but... Um, but that being said, like I said, I'm torn. The good things about it are actually really quite good. Where are you at? I'm I'm also at a B minus only because it does it does fall a little uh, thin still, and you know even just smelling this black reserve, the seven year, I'm already getting a world of different um, things jumping out of the glass that I know I'm looking for with bourbon. So just on a personal profile, I like it better than the Ezra Brooks, which I don't think was the case for you at all. Right. Um, but I still think, you know, I think this is, this is certainly a very different bourbon from the Ezra Brooks or some of the other rye oh, bourbons. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but well, the I mean, 1843s weeded versus the reserve. Oh, yeah. But it's, it, that's, and that's the thing is I think you're going to, you're going to find this on the shelf. And here's the thing. I like this better than like Weller special reserve, which a lot of people go crazy for Weller. Um, I think this is probably right up there with, and people, people will get mad at me for saying this, but I know. And actually I'm going to reserve that comment for this next one, yeah. but <laughs> I know what I'm going to say. Before we move on though, the one thing that I did want to mention is this is an absolutely stunning bottle. Um, Ezra Brooks has like a kind of an old school feel to it, like the ridges on the neck. This, it, when you picked it up and you looked at, especially the white and gold. Um, and actually, I, I kind of like the white and gold color scheme better than the black and gold. They're both good, but I, I love the shape of the bottle. It's 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 stunning, and it's gonna it'll sit really well on the shelf. Really so classic. I, I, I definitely had to mention that. But let's jump into the black. Yeah, and so this one, I. You'll notice it's a little lower than the other ones in terms of <laughs> volume. So it's not a bad thing. Um, no, it's not a bad thing. So I opened this up with my team here uh, at the office, and we all got to try it the other day. And so I'll let Cameron kind of start, and I'll get into my notes after. Yeah, well, I'd love to know the, a little bit the story and what's the difference between um, this and the white label, just to kind of start with. Yeah, so for us um... – and it's it's fairly similar throughout the industry, but a white for us at least a white label is our weeded products, and then a black label is our rye products, so our rye bourbons. 
Um, so as you can see, you know, the 1843 and the Rebel Yell, uh, both weeded. The, the Reserve and the Ezra Brooks are both rye with that black label. Um, but this is something we introduced in 2007, I believe. Uh, I'm sorry, in two, uh, a little bit later, actually, about 2014-15. Our head distiller, um, John Rempe, came up with this. He really wanted to use some of our extra age bourbon, or that seven-year rye bourbon that we had, and uh, make something very unique and something that will, would be somewhat of an older brother to the 1843. Got it. Uh, very, very caramely, uh, sweet, very um, creamy. It's won, it won double gold multiple years in a row at, in San Francisco in 2017 and 18. Then it also won um, best straight bourbon of the year in 2017. So um, we're- well, I'd be happy to start. Happy this is this. very, very good. Uh, on one, the nose, one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. On the nose, <laughs> it immediately jumps out of the glass. And I think this is probably going to be a through line as I describe how I feel about this particular bourbon, but it, it it balances its sweetness and its smokiness incredibly well. So you definitely have those caramel, honey, um, even just, uh, gosh, like- um, I get pie crust. I, I get like mm, orange, li nice. almost like an orange crust. liqueur kind of thing you happening. You know when you break the little edges off the pie and you piss everyone off because you're not taking <laughs> you're not service. actually taking pie. And you're just like that asshole that's just like, I don't know, <laughs> nibbling the little, like the overhanging pie crust. This has that quality. It's got balanced sweetness. Oh, and it's there's ba there's some great baking spices in there. I totally yeah. get cardamom. I totally get just like graham crackery cinnamon. Yeah. Uh, I get the graham cracker. Yeah. Yep. It's the, the, there's a grippiness to it. it the body is very pleasant heat yeah yeah very it handles its heat. heat very very well it's it's super smooth it's right in the back and it's that nice even warming heat that you really want when you're drinking something straight for a yeah. hundred proof i mean for a hundred proof seven year it's uh it's smooth and it's it's one of my favorites to drink either neat or on the rocks you can bl you can mix it if you want um I, I tend to go with 1843 as a, as a mixed drink more than the reserve, just cause I like the flavor of the reserve more. <laughs> yeah. And it really pops and comes out. And I wouldn't mix this. And I, would, I wouldn't I would mix this either. On its own. That it, well, if you did want to mix it, it's going to make a mean Manhattan. Yes, it um, will. That's that sure. being said oh, yeah. though, it does not need to be mixed. It's quite good. I, I don't think it dips quite into the a minus range. It's a strong B plus for me. I'm at a minus and I'll tell you why. Okay. Um, this to me, blind would hold up with the Weller Antique, which you'll pay a hundred dollars for in most places or more. Um, yeah, the the SRP on that is going to be thirty bucks, thirty five bucks, just like this. But I get so frustrated with brands that you know do these allocation games and shit like that. So the fact that you can find this is a huge plus. The fact yeah. that it's as good is a huge plus. It's got the age statement. It's a seven year. It's uh, and again, this is the same mash bill as the 1843. So different mash bill, 1843. This one's, this one's ride. So same mash bill as the Ezra Brooks actually. Got so, it. So this, got this it. does, this, this picks up where the Ezra Brooks really fell flat for me in the sense that it really brings out that heat, that rye spice. And I think that explains why I like it. Cause I do like rye, rye in my bourbons. It's really well balanced. There's not that many whiskeys that can handle sweet, spicy, and smoky right. all at the same time without yep. one of them. I don't get the smoke. I don't know where you're getting smoke. I don't get smoke. I got. I, I really find the sweet and the sweetness up front with that caramel and some nutmeg, a little bit of raisin in there, and then that little bit of spiciness on the back end, kind of down the throat. Um, I don't find it fruity. I don't no, know, I don't, I don't know, get. Um, do any of your, let me ask you this. Do any of your products have any kind of barrel finishing? The ones that are on the table here, no. Got it. Got but it. Davis County, Davies, uh, Davis County, I still mix it up. But the <laughs> Davis County and the Blood Oath. Um, Why is there an E? Why is there an E? <laughs> in I don't know. Everybody's, everybody mixes it up. One uh, of those. It's like LaCroix, LaCroix, LaCrux. No one knows exactly. what it's called, but <laughs> yeah. we just know no, it's, it's cheap it's, and... Locality. It's Davis. Davis County is is how it's pronounced. Davis. That David Nicholson Reserve is extremely good for the price. Um, I think you'd spend sixty to eighty bucks to find something on that level. Yeah. From, from another producer. So 
you know, hats off on that one. That was really, really good. Um, yeah, I, so I'm, I'm, I appreciate again, it. A minus. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so one what, thing that, that we actually found out, well, not found out, it, it, there was a write up about it. I can't remember if it was in Forbes magazine or what magazine. It might have been Whiskey Advocate or, or Whiskey Magazine. But earlier in the year, um, when Henry McKenna tenure was actually uh, very hard to find and, and extremely allocated, uh, they were actually comparing um, the reserve to that Henry McKenna tenure. Um, they were saying, you know, if you can't find that tenure, go for the David Nicholson reserve, which was pretty special for us. Um, you know, that tenure is, is something special for the Henry McKenna. So for us to be kind of in that same, that same realm um, was, was really good. Yeah, cool. Evan, Evan Hills, obviously, you know, a brand to beat and, and a, a big player and, you know, also a family company generations old and, Back in the day, it was much more family oriented. Now there's not as many family owned and operated distilleries. Uh, Lux Row being one of them, Heaven Hill being the other, everybody else is, is pretty much a big conglomerate, um, whether it's Beam Centauri or Sazerac. Um, but everybody's kind of in it for the same goal, and that's to grow bourbon. Yeah, we're competing against each other, but you know, Heaven Hill saw it firsthand with the fire, you know, uh, back in the day. and once that happened, all the other distilleries came to, to Max's aid. I mean, my dad talked to Max the day it happened. And, you know, everybody was, you know, if you need whiskey, let us know. We'll distill for you. We'll age for you. We'll bottle for you. Just let us know what you need. Or, you know, everybody's in it together. Um, we're all just trying to grow the, the bourbon, bourbon as a name, bourbon whiskey, and the bourbon trail in Kentucky and Bardstown as – uh, like I like to call the Napa Valley of bourbon now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's why bourbon is where it is today. I yeah. think that's why whiskey is this international global phenomenon. And I think bourbon really being at the forefront of that next to Scotch whiskey is, is one of those things like that attitude that the, the community has. Yeah, growing bourbon. It, when you, when you use that phrase, it immediately struck me because it was like, it's not just growing the product itself from start to finish. Cause obviously it starts as grains and ends right. as something that many people put their hands on, but also just growing the industry as a whole and its prominence. And, and yeah, absolutely. It's, it is a collaboration and, and, and clearly you guys are very proud of what you make, but I'm sure you're also drinking stuff that other people make and you're like, dude, this stuff's really good too. You know, it's awesome. And, and, and everything elevates everything else. So yep, absolutely. tell us about Rebel Yell. Yes. Before we can get into the 100, I, I can, I'll dive in a little bit to um, the Rebel Yell brand as a whole. Um, so Rebel Yell, uh, we purchased in 1999 from Stitzel Weller. So that was, that was who owned it, uh, there. So that was that original Stitzel Weller mash bill, um, dating back to uh, 1849. Um, and, uh, we purchased it from them and, and kept it going from 1999 all the way until now. So we have our full lineup of Rebel, of Rebel Yell. We've got our Rebel Yell 80 proof Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, um, We've got our Rebel Yell Rye. We've got our Rebel Yell Flavors, Ginger and Root Beer. Um, and then we actually introduced this Rebel Yell 100 this year. And uh, it has been an absolute success for us so far. Uh, it's got some delicious flavor profiles. Um, same mash bill as the 1843, but the 1843 is a little bit more small batch um, and uh, regional, whereas the Rebel Yell is national and worldwide. Um, that Rebel Yell 80 and 100 is overseas in Asia, Australia, uh, New Zealand, Japan. Um, so let me uh, see if I was listening. Is it 68 2012? Yep. Yeah, you got there it. You go. 68 2012 is the weed. I name. haven't. I haven't been drinking enough. That's yeah. <laughs> if I can remember that. Right. Then I, I need. Exactly. I need. To, you got to send us some cast strength because this isn't working. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. This is, this is really, this is, yeah, off the top. It's, it, this is doing for me. It's funny because they're the same mash bill. And I know, the same but, proof, they, yeah, but, but they're, they're very different. What's, they're very what's different. creating the difference? If it's the same mash bill, same proof, and it's distilled in the same place, what's the difference between the Rebel Yell 100 and the 1843? Well, like I said, a little smaller batch. Um, that 1843 is just a you know, smaller batch. We take upwards of 150 to 200 barrels for the Rebel Yell. Um, and blend the, you know, we'll dump them in Kentucky, put them all in the same tanker truck, 
bring them back to St. Louis and proof them down here. So they all, you know, all those barrels blend really nicely together. So you get all those different profiles and those flavors coming together. Batch size. Um, mm. with, with the 1843 versus the verse Rebel Yell as a whole. Um, you know, if you drink the Rebel Yell 80 proof, um, for me now, I'm more of a 90 upwards now. The Rebel Yell 80 is um, not weak, but it's 80 proof. So if you enjoy bourbon, um, that 80 proof is on the low end of that proof scale. Um, so it's extremely entry, entry, level, extreme, entry level, entry level, very yeah. easy to drink. I mean, if you just want, you know, one of my favorite cocktails to make is one of the easiest. I do Rebel Yell either 80 or 100 with either water or club soda and a lime. That's it. You can drink it. You know, it's, it's that smooth. Um, you know, the, our kind of, our, what we say our motto is for Rebel Yell is defiantly smooth bourbon, uh, defiantly defiantly smooth, smooth yeah. weeded bourbon. And that's, well, that's really what it is. It, it does handle its heat better than 1843 for me. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a much more well-rounded sweetness. It doesn't have some of the highs that the uh, Nicholson 1843 had, but it doesn't have the sharp heat that I got on that one. And it is. It is very, very well-rounded. Um, sli- slightly char, uh, charred barrel, woody on the, on the nose. But honestly, this is a... Um, this is a mellowed sweetness through and through. A little marshmallow. Got a marshmallow yeah, on it. for sure marshmallow out of there. All of our products are number three char. So the Rebel Yell for me, just to wrap on that, I for some unknown reason, I like it substantially better than the 1843. This is I per- personal. I do too. I'm going B. High, B. high B. Um, and this comes in at a lower price, I believe, than the yes. 43. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah, a little bit lower. So sure. between the two, my vote is save your money and just get the Rebel Yell 100 at a little more of a balanced. Maybe it's the batch size, but that balance is really doing it for me. Yeah, and and the Rebel Yell is going to appeal to a wider audience. I think it's going to be a little bit more mixable. I think somebody that really really loves weeded bourbon should definitely at least try the 1843. But I'm with you. The Rebel Yell is an easy B for me. I quite liked it the moment that I had it, and it was super well round from start to finish. But I, I, I was quite happy with it. Before we move on to the Ezra's, um, the, you know the the one thing I'll say about Rebel Yell is if you see that ten year, just fucking buy it because <laughs> it is so good. And that was for one sure. of the ones I found it for sixty five dollars one time. Absolute steal. I see people buying it for a hundred ten online, and it's just or more. Uh, okay, so this is a relic. Awesome. I found this old bottle of – now, just looking at it, this rare old sip and whiskey, Old Ezra 101 Genuine Sour Mash. How old is this bottle? I don't even know what I have here. I mean, that's from right when we bought the product. This is one of the older bottles, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's discontinued in our company right now. Because you don't, you don't have it at 101. Now you've got a 58.5%. Nope. So what year would you peg this at if you had to guess? Oh, man. Um, we bought the brand in 93. We discontinued that in 2016. I'd say that's probably... I'd say that's from 95 to 97 maybe is when we started that product and kept it going. That label of it, yeah, damn, yeah. old Ezra. Um, <laughs> but twenty five dollars. <laughs> my my dad's running. My dad's running around the house here somewhere, so I can confirm that if he stops back in here. Yeah, you should grab him and bring him down here. Yeah, I, I will. I'll uh, I'll text him right now. I talk. love when you pull stuff out and and you talk with folks that work at the brand, and they're like, wh- wh- "Where did why you, do you get even that? Have that? Where no, and, and <laughs> you can kind of see Philip on the on the side here that we've got a, a hell of a collection in the studio." um we're we're at like 750 bottles give or take um (laughs) but again you know my i love how he just casually says that (laughs) we've got we've got a a really you know especially with your brand we've got these two bottles here that i think a lot of people would you know stampede each other to to find and so i'm really it's kind of a treat to get to drink these with you uh you know bearing the name lux and, and representing you know, the next generation of the company, uh, Ezra, you know, you guys came out with a bang. You, you brought Ezra back to the spotlight and you did it 
with gusto and glory. I mean, you won Whiskey Advocate Top 20 uh, last year. You've got this gorgeous package. It's trading on the secondary market now, upwards of double to triple its yep. retail price. The Ezra brand, what makes the Ezra brand? Tell us about who Ezra Brooks is and the Ezra brand, and what are we drinking? Yeah, so, um, well, I, I, just, uh, I just got word from my dad. Uh, probably around 2000 is when we stopped that product, so a little bit, <laughs> little bit, late, uh, a little bit earlier than I thought there, but there wasn't a ton of marketing behind it. Um, and we actually discontinued it because it was, um, it was going to too good. Yeah, it was too good. Exactly. <laughs> it's too good. for One, yeah, well, yeah. one, we needed, we needed the juice to age up. We just didn't have as, you know, that much seven year juice. And then we introduced that David Nicholson reserve at a hundred proof. So, um, it was going to directly compete against it, but, um, you know, the Ezra brand is just that honest, honest to goodness, you know, 90 proof, uh, rye bourbon. That's, a great everyday drinker from top to bottom, whether it's the rye or the KSBW, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Um, that's, you know, very affordable. So you know? these kind of have a, a, a tie because they're the same mash bill. They're essentially, this is just a way older version of this product, essentially, the Nicholson Black 7-year with a little mm -hmm. bit of rye in it and the Ezra, the old Ezra 7. The only difference is that this is drinking at, a slightly higher proof, literally one proof higher, um, and was distilled, you know, back when maybe the equipment was a little older and not as, you know, quite the same setup as you may have had, what, 15 something years later. But yep. whatever the difference is, holy fuck, because this is really <laughs> good. We can curse on this show. You know that, right? No, I love it. No, it's great. Yeah, I <laughs> mean, it's delicious. If you this can is find good. It, I would, I'll drink that every day too. I mean, I love it. That this one is nuts. Point. That um, seven year it's got um, all the caramel all the marshmallow all of that sort of like yeasty it smells like you're in the distillery for me you know you feel like you're there yeah this is this is like that desserty tiramisu pie crust kind of and then there's and there's, there's earthiness to it i'm getting it has just enough um almost tannic acid to it that I like. I, I think it, I think it must be something f that's happening with the barrel because there's a, just a really it's almost like a vanilla y wood oh, yeah. thing. Yeah, the, the vanilla is definitely the vanilla is definitely mm -hmm. vanillin um, that comes from the barrel is something special when when it hits right. Sometimes it's kind of off, you know, off flavor a little bit, but when it's when it really hits right in those in those barrels, it it comes off very nicely and adds some great. Um, texture and, and uh, I guess deepness to that bourbon where you can really pull out those caramel vanilla notes that exactly that you're looking for that can really come from those barrel notes where the only place you can get it is from the barrel. Well, it's interesting yeah. because when you talk about sweetness, there's something, you know, there's, there's something like, okay, I get honey or I get vanilla. And then there's like, when you talk about just like a range of dessert notes that's when it gets really nuanced. That's when you have a bourbon that's playing in the sweeter category, but it hits lots of little things as it's kind of going along that path. Yep. And it totally does that for me. What's interesting though is this, how much rye is in this? Uh, the same, 10%. Same. Same. I don't get rye forward at all on this. No, this I don't is a get lot peppery. More... I don't get spicy. This is totally in that really well-rounded sweet category. We tasted a substantial difference from the batch size of the same age and mash bill of the Rebel Yell and the 1843. So looking at the Nicholson Reserve uh, black label and this outdated uh, discontinued old Ezra <laughs> that no one can ever find. Um, is there a batch size difference that you're aware of that may have led to this being either Not smaller nearly as rye or a word. larger batch? Yeah. Hey, I'm hey. <laughs> There's, hey, there he is. Hey, guys, how are you? What's ya? going on? Good, how's is it this, going? This is, this is, Don? This is, this is my dad, Don. This is Seth and Cameron from uh, the Cartel Hour podcast. So hey, they're with uh, Hi, Don. Hey, it's good to meet <laughs> you, Don. <laughs> but right now we're just talking about uh, Old Ezra 7 101 from back in the day. Um, a we little found a bottle, and now we're drinking it. <laughs> yeah. Got the, the Ezra B12 as well. Yeah, there, I wish, so. we what we were, I wish uh, back then we were a little bit smarter. We were selling that stuff for way too, way too great of a value. So oh, I think I bought it for twenty five dollars. 
Yeah. It was covered. In, it was covered in dust. They didn't I, know what they had. Seth, you you owe them money. If, yeah, uh, if you <laughs> pay that for twenty five bucks for that, you owe them money. <laughs> no, I'm excited. This is our next one. Is the Ezra B single barrel twelve year uh, at forty nine and a half percent. Yeah, I almost don't want to rate that. Ninety nine proof. What I want to say is it's really good. I'm sorry you can't get it anymore. It's I'm just, giving, it's I'm giving it an A-. An a- it's minus. very, very this is, good. This is damn close I'm to so sad you cannot get it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, I mean, if it, is, it is quite – it's in the same family as that David Nicholson Reserve, which I thought was fantastic. So, you know, hey, if that's your – if that's a comparison that you can get right now, that is not bad either. So, so Don, what do you think of this one? Oh, we love it. I mean, that was one <laughs> this one when we came out with it. We had all this overage whiskey that we were selling a lot of overseas, basically in Japan. And there really wasn't much of a market here for it, but we really? introduced it. Uh, this was probably you know, 10 or 12 years ago. And we introduced it in a few markets here in the U S and it, it did really well. We just didn't really know what we were doing. We didn't uh, know where to price it. So uh, it did really well where we had it and it was a great value. And then uh, probably too good of a value because we, we ran out of it. Now, did you know, <laughs> did you know that bourbon was going to blow up like it has, or were you caught off guard by it at at any level you know we always say we'd rather be uh lucky than good you know we've kind of been long whiskey for a lot of years probably 20 years even before my dad passed away and he would always say what are we doing with all this whiskey and we thought well we should just make sure we have enough because it takes so long to age and it's such a special product and so when bourbon really took off you know we were long whiskey fortunately so we've been able to do all this great innovation but i think Probably back in 2010, our distributors started talking to us about they could see a trend that whiskey was really taking off. And then by 2013 or 14, we could really see things happening. And we were just, uh, I'd love to say that I was a visionary and we saw it. I mean, one of the great stories we love to tell is when, when Sazerac bought the whiskey business from Constellation back in 2008, they had about 40,000 barrels, if you could imagine, of extra whiskey that nobody wanted. We didn't want it. Heaven Hill didn't want it. Sazerac, Barton didn't know what to do with it. And so we all, we all turned it down and they basically just sold it on the, on the open market. And, you know, three or four years later, we were all not really laughing or crying about it. Just kind of, <laughs> nobody saw it coming. We sure wish we had all that whiskey again. So it really got hot within a two or three year period. And then it just, it just has really taken off from there. And and you see it staying. You think it's just gonna it's gonna ride out. For well, people are doing so much interesting new things with it, and then you also have the classics. I mean, but yeah, we'd yeah. love to know your opinion. Yeah, I think what what we see, if you look at with what you know, we try to try to uh, follow what others are doing to some respect around the world. Um, and if you look at what Brown Foreman and Jim Beam and Diageo and and really Heaven Hill and Sazerac as well are doing not just in the U S but around the world. And, you know, bourbon is, we think it's going to, it'll flatten out a little bit in the U S not grow as fast, but what's happening in the rest of the world is just staggering. And so that's why you see all of us increasing production as fast as we can, because, you know, as things get hot here in the U S they'll start to expand around the world. Um, you know, beams parent company is a, a Japanese company and they're, you know, they've introduced their Japanese whiskeys here to the U.S., and you've seen how well that's gone. Oh, yeah. Also doing the same, introducing, you know, uh, Jim Beam bourbon around the world and opening up all kinds of new markets. So the U.S. is going to continue to grow, but not at the pace that it has. But the rest of the world is 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 just it's so small right now. We're just waking up. Opportunity, yeah. Just waking up. Well, that it's an exciting place to be in, and I think you guys are are – situated to do extremely well and and just based on what we're trying today i mean there's some serious you know monster whiskeys here and you know you're giving them you're uh, some of these you're giving them away <laughs> they're, they're too they're too yeah, good I'm for the price point i'm not gonna be the point. one to tell you to raise the prices because you know don't raise the prices because but... i want to keep you know <laughs> For anyone listening to this podcast, you know, you're going to, you're, you're getting in on a secret, but there are some, there are some bottles here that are, you know, uh, very, one, very hint, good hint, 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 yeah. hint. that you can find <laughs> that <laughs> are <laughs> Nicholson. <laughs> Nicholson. Yeah. Glasses on. We yeah. loved it. We yeah. love that Nicholson. Uh, yeah. 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 Depending on how this one goes, I mean, honestly, that I would pour the David Nicholson reserve. One of the things we do when we get off the podcast is we uh, stop drinking, drinking immediately and we all go home. 
No, just yeah. kidding. We actually just keep drinking and we pick something from the table that we really like and that's totally a front runner for me. So and that's how it goes. Um, anyway, it was, it's a pleasure to hear from you. Don, yeah, and, thanks for uh, coming yeah, nice and popping you on. Yeah. Pretty bad. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, I know thanks you're leaning in there. I feel bad. <laughs> yeah. um, thanks for the interest in our products too, guys. Oh, we're, we're okay. fascinated. I'll let you finish up with Philip. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank cheers, you, Don. Guys. It was a pleasure chatting yeah, with cheers. you. Guys. You bet. Cheers. Thanks, boss. You bet. See you later. See you later. What a treat. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. fun. Oh Good. my gosh. Thank you. Absolutely. No, my pleasure. <laughs> you sit down with no, all the lux you get too. No. I mean, yeah. they call that no, the deluxe. That's the deluxe <laughs> right there. Hey, it's it's um that you say that it's uh I don't know if I'd say I'd, I lucked out or what, but you know, he's he's Don, right? So his initial is deluxe. And uh I'm Philip Don Lux, so my initial is deluxe too. So um I, 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 I'm definitely fortunate with, with the name, but I'm even more fortunate to have a, a dad like that, that'll, um, you know, teach me the industry that allows me to be around it since I was a little kid, you know, riding on the conveyor belts in the production line, you know, <laughs> uh, literally seeing boxes made when I was, or seeing product come off the, off the production line at five years old, walking around there, um, seeing massive trucks pull in and, put their hoses, you know, connect their hoses and pump in, you know, 80,000 gallons, uh, or, uh, when, you know, whatever it is, um, into, the, into the facility. So what a shitty childhood. Yeah. How <laughs> terrible it, for you. You must right? be so messed up. <laughs> and and the, well, the, the best part is the best part is about it. He's always, he's never pressured me to be in the industry ever in my whole entire life. Yeah. He must've really twisted your arm to make fucking whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the funniest part about it is my mom is the one that actually came to me with the idea to get into the business. So, um, hard sell, real hard sell <laughs> four years ago. Yeah. Oh, and, and and I'll tell you one thing. I was actually living in Aspen, Colorado at the time when she told me that. So I, uh, I will. You were, you were going for the dream there. You were going for the pro <laughs> snowboarding thing, and it didn't pan out. <laughs> More of a, I was a pro uh, boot fitter uh, in a ski shop. So I don't, ah. know, I don't know about snowboarding, but I definitely I skied every day for two years straight. So I skied over 250 days. All right. Well, we're ending on the ending- infamous blue wax topped Ezra B with 12 its, years. It's, Single it, barrel. It, it is literally wearing its own metal, which is oh, yeah. awesome. It's like a, it's like it's wearing a suit almost the bottle yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta look this one up if you're at home listening you gotta look this up and you know i think uh as we sip this you know i've had plenty of the bottles half gone i've, I've enjoyed this bottle many a times which you should which you should uh, but in but you know i space it out i don't go i don't don't go to it every weekend i kind of come back once or twice you know every other month um to remember remind myself how good it is because i do enjoy it um and I know it's more of a first time experience for Cameron here. It is. It is but a very pleasant one the, on first sip. The hmm. question I think I have is, you know, so how long have you been in the business really working the business, not just riding the conveyor belts as a child, but <laughs> yeah. uh, how long have you been in the business and, you know, what sort of involvement do you want to see? You know, sounds like you're on the marketing side now, um, but do you want to be in brand development? What, what do you, as the name bearer of the company, what do you want to be involved in? What do you want to do? Yeah, absolutely. So um, going towards more of the first part of the question there, I've been in the business for about three and a half years now. Um, we opened the distillery in 2018. We started production on it in 2016. Um, so I was still living in Colorado. I came on as the uh, global brand ambassador for Lux Road Distillers in 2018. Um, actually, right at the start, right about the end of, of 2017, honestly, in April of 2017. Um, and really watched the distillery grow. Uh, I lived in Louisville, Kentucky, so I was at the distillery about two or three times a week. Um, giving tours, kind of being the face uh, of the family there when my mom and dad weren't able to be there. Um, and I lived in Kentucky for about two years, uh, going to Whiskey Fest, go, you know, Chicago, San Francisco, New York, all those, Whiskey in the Winter in St. Louis, stuff like that. Um, and it was really, really something special for me. Uh, my mom actually came to me when I was in, in Colorado and said, listen, this is a great opportunity for you to dive into the, in the industry and into the business, um, you know, come in as the Luxro brand ambassador. And that's exactly what I did. And um, I really embraced the real roots, real family, real products uh, mentality and 
Uh, you know, you met my dad, Don, but my mom, Shell, was actually the creative director of the whole distillery. So uh, she created it. video experience, any artwork you see around it, the tasting room, uh, the gift shop. That was all her keen eye. And uh, so it really embraces that real roots, real family, real products um, mentality. And she did an amazing job. The uh, I, room I really appreciate is, it. Tasting room is stunning. What? Um, and we actually just hung out in the in the gift shop and like the couches. Yeah. She right. Some, I mean, I'm sure she had a, a hand in picking furniture and whatnot. So um, we were just sitting there hanging out. You know, they let us drink a little bit while we were in the gift shop and for we sure buying some stuff. It was great. Well, it's, you know, I mean, just the, the little details that went into that um, with the, it, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm like a broken record when I say real, real, real roots, real family, real products, but my brother and my dad are both pilots and okay. those couches are the aviation uh, addition from restoration hardware. And so, you know, my dad flies himself down to the distillery sometimes. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Or flies right into Bardstown when he has meetings um, at the distillery. And, you know, that's just those little things that bring it full circle back to, you know, the family aspect of it. Cause that's truly, you know, you say your brother works there too. No, no, he, he does not work there. He's just, he's also a pilot. He has his pilot license. Got it. Got um, it. he is not in the, in the business. I'm sure he comes by to drink every now and then. He does. Yeah. Yeah. He'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll enjoy a, he'll enjoy a dark spirit or two every now and again. Um, for sure. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, in uh actually at the start of this year um i had the opportunity to 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 transition roles from kentucky back to st louis my hometown all, all my friends are here um and transition into the uh assistant brand manager for our luxro whiskey so that's where i'm at now nice. um, you know it's been about three and a half years uh i love it i love every aspect of it um i i've found it to be very interesting and um, educational to see how a brand is born, to see how a brand is transformed from one to another, um, working on innovation, working on the media side of it with our different agencies, how kind of, uh, how that comes into play and, and how they really help bring a brand to life and um, how we work on uh, build outs for off premise versus on premise strategy um, for each brand or our you know our 2021 plans uh, with uh, different you know different mentalities and different sayings and different uh, POS items that can go into the market for for our salespersons. I work you know daily with our salespersons, um, so it's been really it's been a lot of fun for me because I've always been on the outside looking in, um, just honestly drinking them, you know, bring, you know, I would go to college with a case of booze, uh, if not two or three, because, you know, that's, that's where I was at. And, um, you know, now to be on this side of it, it's, it's something really special to be able to work with my dad, um, and my mom, honestly, you know, uh, it's sometimes it's hard, but, uh, it's some, it's, it's really exciting for me to see, um, to see the progression of the distillery from 2016 to 2020 now, four years since we broke ground. Um, it's incredible to go back there and, and look at it. Um, I sometimes, I joke about, you know, my mom had an incredibly hard job of raising me for 25 years, um, 26 years, 25 and a half. And then, you know, she took, she did the, the uh, creative director, you know, took on the creative director role of the distillery and absolutely knocked it out of the park. Um, you know, with everything that she did there from, like I said, artwork to the visitor center, uh, yeah. she mentioned Seth to the tasting room with the copper tops. Um, no, it's great. I mean, it's really everything buttoned up brand and yeah. I mean, are we going to, are we going to talk about like how this, <laughs> incredible this is. <laughs> it's awesome. I need to, I need to pour a little more. This is uh, I will. Yeah. Um, uh. I'm, at an a, I'm at an A, A minus. It's really got all the honeycomb flavor. It's got a molasses sort of uh, viscosity to it. It's the thickest whiskey of all of them. It really is something that you can't cheat that 12 year age statement. Um, yep. And the fact that it is a single barrel and it's not blended, you're really getting all the flavor Yeah, and it's not being, um, you know, brought in by any kind of, you know, 
barrel blending or batching. It's just a single barrel, 12 year. You know, today it's so hard to find a, I wish I, they had more than one. I wish I had bought four bottles of that when I saw it. Um, Cause you yeah, know, you I, messed I, I didn't up, know buddy. what it was when I bought it. So many, you know, the, the, the plight of the whiskey collector is going to always be that if I had known then <laughs> that this right. fucking bottle was going to be right. allocated or rare or was discontinued. And I, you know, you can't know every whiskey. There's too many whiskeys out there. If you were at the distillery and saw the Blood Oath Pact one and you're able to buy more than, you know, one bottle, I'm sure you, you would have picked up a full case. I would have picked up. Yeah, really, this is such a special bottle. I know it trades at like three or $400 now, but it's- Yeah, a, this is an easy A- minus for me. I, I, if you can find it and you can pick it up for that price, it would be worth it. Um, this, is, this is a very special whiskey. It is- uh, the nuances of that it's for me, I get like this really like salt water, taffy, caramel, nice. dessert, tiramisu, like that burnt top chocolate, of tiramisu. Taffy. Yeah. Chocolate flavor taffy. It, it, I just honestly, what it, what it envisions it to me is I'm in a, a salt water taffy facility and I'm just being surrounded by all those <laughs> myriad of different smells. I'm going in for more. Uh, yeah. Well, Love it. Do you I'll mind? Pour, I'll pour Seth? a little more of this. Because well. that, I mean, that's very good. Because this, is, gotta, this is incredible. You know, and here's the question, Philip. Um, how different is this single barrel 12 year from your 12 year, other than the fact that it's double barreled? Could this be from the same source? And do you know the mash bill of this 12 year? Uh, it could be from the same source. It is that rye mash bill that we use. Um, it is in our, in our Lux road, double barrel, it's that same rye mash bill, but those two, you know, two barrels blended together. So, Got it. um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's most likely from, from one of the same sources that, uh, the other, the other products are from 99. Proof, this is such yeah. a special treat. This is so cool. You so, know, it's safe to say that you've, you've been, you know, it's not born into royalty. You know, you're not the Sultan of an Arabian palace or, you know, <laughs> the heir to the throne of England or whatnot, but you have been born into whiskey royalty, my friend, and you have uh, certainly embraced it. And I can tell you're passionate about it. And I can tell that, you know, even though you've only been in it for a few years officially, it runs in your blood and, and it, you can tell. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's really absolutely, apparent. Absolutely. I think you got a, uh, an amazing future ahead of you at an amazing company that's putting out some amazing bourbon. Yeah. And, I, I really you know, appreciate it. Thank you. And we, you know, as we sort of wrap right. up the tasting that we have on the table here, what I'd be really curious is what do you want to leave people with as to where the company's going in the near future? Yeah. I mean, well, so we're going to continue to grow. Um, we are going to continue to innovate uh, we've got some fantastic innovation um, coming for 2021. Uh, I can't leak any of those to the to the public right now. Can you give us maybe like a high level as to where your head's at or anything? Yeah, or? yeah, for sure. Um, there'll be uh, there might there might be a little bit of a change to uh, the 1843 in the reserve. Nothing on the nothing on the flavor profile or the juice um, and some uh another change to the uh there might be something coming for the ezra brooks brand and a uh, little bit of change for the higher end of the rebel yell brands as well so we're really excited about that 12 year 12 year rebel <laughs> yell. single barrel um, let's go but i you know i really I, I would love to leave uh leave it with you know we truly strive to be a family-owned and operated company and that is a huge aspect of us whether um, the people within our in, 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 within our company are our actual blood family or not. Um, everybody is treated like that. My dad knows everybody's birthday and wishes them a happy birthday on their birthday. I mean, it's been an amazing tasting. Yeah, I really got a, blast, uh, a picture of sort of some of those entry level, some of those little more nuanced, and some of those extremely rare or older. I mean, we kind of covered a lot of it's ground It's a fun today. tasting. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely it's a broad, great, definitely a wide range there that we did, went through today. No, it's yeah. great. And so we can't thank you enough for the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was great to get your dad on. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so 
Uh, we, you know, you're great too, Philip. <laughs> I appreciate no, it. Was I great. appreciate no, it. Thank you. It was all great. It was all great. Yeah. And we're gonna... No, seriously. Well, ch- you know, cheers and thank you so much for coming on. You know. Thanks for the time, Philip. We appreciate no, you coming it's, on. It's my pleasure. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Cameron and Seth here. Just a few more things before we wrap up. First, you can always head on over to cartelhour.com for the show notes, which will include links to all the spirits mentioned and, of course, consumed on the podcast. Absolutely. If you're interested in purchasing any of the spirits mentioned on the podcast, go ahead and click any of the links to be taken directly to those spirits or visit castcartel.com. They are America's largest online premium spirits marketplace and have been featured in Rolling Stones Magazine, Men's Journal, The Wall Street Journal, Forbes, MarketWatch, and many others. Yeah, they are awesome and super mobile friendly too. They're a fantastic resource to search through different types of spirits and their platform is easy and straightforward. If you don't love driving around to every single liquor store in town and hoping they have what you're looking for, Cask Cartel is certainly the best e-commerce spirits platform I've personally come across. Couldn't agree more. And you can find them on social media at Cast Cartel, and you can find us at Cartel Hour for the podcast, where you can find information about upcoming episodes and live tastings at the Infusory. And speaking of those live tastings, for those living in or visiting the Los Angeles area that are truly intrigued, If you want to drink along with us, we would love to have you come and enjoy an evening at the Infusory to drink through a carefully selected assortment of spirits. We offer custom flights and have a robust library of over 700 spirits to choose from. Visit our website for more information on how to become a member of the Cartel Club. And if you're a spirits brand that would like to be featured on the podcast, please email us or send us a direct message on Instagram. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And remember to always drink responsibly and in good company.